Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne with Back to Earth Creations and today we are working on a sheet melt. Um, and it's a weird kind, sorry, I'm not mic'd up so the audio is gonna be kinda weird. Um, we're trying something a little bit different where we are stacking some pretty serious layers. And so I am using an opaque blue wispy and this was a 12 by 12 sheet that was cut in half and then cut into fourths. And now I'm cutting those fourths in half into like three inch squares. And we are gonna start by putting one of these down in the center of, this is a thin fire bullseye, um, thin fire bullseye paper on a 12 by 12, what you call it? Kiln shelf, there we go. Now, I am going to make sure that we're only elevated by one inch because I don't want my glass too close to the heating element in the top of my kiln because this is actually gonna stack up pretty crazy high. And now I'm going to be using this coarse clear. About a teaspoon of it, kind of patting it out a little bit. Now I'm using 96 COE but that's just what I'm using. Uh, in whatever glass that you're using, you're gonna wanna stay compatible, but I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to do this with a bullseye uh, 90 COE glass as opposed to the ocean side I'm using here. And now I have, these are sheets of, both of the sheets that I'm using are three millimeter, and this is clear with white wispy. And I'm just setting that on there. Oh, also I added in, this is some blue aventurine, which is like a shimmery glass. And let's add one more blue in here. Ooh, that's gonna be pretty. Here we have a medium grit sky blue transparent. And I'm just gonna put a bit of that right there. And I'm just gonna spread it out. And now let's do a layer of the blue with some of our blue aventuring. As well as a teaspoon of that sky blue just to see how they react with each other. So it's like a science sandwich made out of glass. Um, <laughs> or like if you made like a quadruple decker s'mores, but again, out of glass. And then changing the direction that my wispies are going in just because, why not? And then here I'm going to do just a little bit of this blue aventurine again. Not blue aventurine, the sky blue. And this one's translucent, so it should give us some really nice little wispies and I'm wondering let's do just a little bit of this white opalescent and this is a medium grit as well and I'm just using a half teaspoon scoop in case you weren't wondering about that what's up baby oh did Bubba take your toy it's hard being a puppy you guys I don't know how she does it So I've zoomed in a little bit here so that hopefully you can see a little better. Um, I'm going to stack our blue wispy and then I'm going to do a layer just where there's nothing in between. So there's three layers like that and we can do, oh let's do some more of that blue adventuring. I do love, I do love a good shimmer. Um, in what we've got going on. And even though like how it's placed quite densely on here, um, we're going to get some really nice spread on this because as it melts, it's going to puddle out very similar to what we have going on here. So you can see how it shifted and it stretched. So that's how, now this was done with a, another color mixed in as well. But I mean, that's really, really cool. 
I think. And that's just stage one. It's going to get even cooler from there. So I am going to go ahead and do some clear though, because I really like how the clear seems to push and melt into the aventurine and distort that shimmer. And so it makes it go a little farther. Also, oh my gosh, I just had the idea of what if we went like this. So I have two samples of how it, what it looks like whenever we don't do a little bit of a twist to it. So now I'm really interested to see how this comes out. So now I'm going to set our clear offset just a little bit. I'm gonna do our sky blue. There's that. And then we can do another of our blue, another of our clear, another of our blue. And then from here, we can take some clear and some more of this blue venturing that apparently I need to order more of because we are like scraping the bottom of the barrel here on this one. There's that. And then I'm going to cap it with just this last bit of the clear and white wispy. So we are going to fire this. This is how it looks like zoomed out. And this is how it looks from the side. And it actually picks up as it melts and spreads. Um, and this pile here should melt down into about that size. So we will check back in 12 hours. The firing schedule is in the video description below. And uh, wish us luck. Okay guys, so it is the next morning. We're gonna open this up. It's still at about 213 degrees. So let's go ahead and crank it open. Oh yeah, that looks so cool. Mm. So it puddled out really nice. That's probably, cause I thought I was making it a little bit taller than the other one. So let's see, size wise. It's a little bigger. It's a little bigger but it still works. We're testing to see what the limits of this kiln paper is, but uh, can't wait to see what it looks like cooled down. We're gonna close it back, that way it can cool nice and slow. But I just, I couldn't wait, I wanted to get a peeky. Okay guys, so please pardon the messy kitchen, it just, it is what it is. But these are how the slices of some of these different puddle cabs have come out. Let me go ahead and wet the edge of one of them for you so you can see what I mean. We have these guys here. These are a separate melt as were these, as were these guys. So I'm just going to whoop, get some water on it. <laughs> but you can see all of that banding. Now, whenever Randy cut this on the ring saw for me, it does leave a little bit, you know, of a rough, you know, edge there, but that'll that'll fire down just fine. Um, check out, you, we have a little bit of translucency, but really not much on these ones here, but I'm really interested to see how these bands spread out. And let's go ahead and get the kiln loaded. And this is how they're looking on the kiln paper, on the kiln shelf, on the kiln posts to allow for circulation. And I'm going to run these through a full fuse schedule. I'm a little concerned about if they join together, but quite frankly, if that happens, we'll just have some really cool like edge pieces. It's just science. Let's see what's happening. So this is it the following morning, you guys. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. Okay, so they did smush together, which I think is gonna be just fine. I'm really glad they did not exceed their um, kiln paper. And we're gonna let these cool, we're gonna clean it up, and then we're gonna smash the crap out of them. <laughs> okay, so y'all, check this out. Let me try to make the sound without so much shaky noise. Okay, let's try again. What a 
cool noise that makes. I don't know if the camera picked up on it at all, but... Alrighty, guys, please pardon the excellent audio quality. We are out on the front porch. This is how the light's shining through. So there's that one. And then this is another one that we had done, and I really, I just love the how it how it came out, but let's smash them and see what happens. I'm gonna try. Break right there. And of course we have our eye protection on. <laughs> well that works. <laughs> That's a start for sure. Mm-hmm. Now, some of those I can probably come through and clip with the nippers yeah. to get them down smaller. Like, those, those I can nipper. Okay. Yep. Will you actually grab some, uh, some clips? Yeah. Now that we've got bigger pieces that aren't massive, we're going to smash them down more. That's just a 10 pound weight. It does a pretty good job. And the Dixie cup is for catching all the spray that's coming off of these things. We can put those in the molds as well and get some really cool looking things that way. So what I've done here is I've tried to separate or rather collect all the shards. Okay, let me see. It doesn't look like a lot, but when you throw them in here, it certainly helps as well as helps keep all of the glass shards to a minimum so us and the dogs don't accidentally end up with some more in our feet. I just the part of my nip. Yeah, I can nip that as well. So we don't want to bust them up too small, but just enough. And this adds a really nice element of like randomness to it, of just the fracture lines of the glass. We are just about done with one color. Did that work? No, I need to hit it harder. Sweet. <laughs> so Randy's still out there chunking glass. I still have my eye protection on and I'm just going to come through and I want to make sure all of the pieces have like a straight edge. And it's, ooh, there we go. A little tricky getting these tile nippers to go. But let's check this out. Look at those inclusions in there. And so we can get different effects whether we chunk this and lay it this way, we're going to get the edge. So I actually want to remove as much edge material as possible because now we can come in and we can set this on its edge on our kiln shelf and it'll melt down and we can kind of control depending on which edge you have facing up is going to affect how the final piece comes out so I'm going to get all of these nipped and then we'll get them loaded into the kiln and we'll meet you there at that next step
So here you can see I've left quite a bit of space around each of these cabs because think of it like when you're baking a, lo a load of cookies or I guess it's called a batch of cookies. Um, yeah, baking a batch of cookies, you want to leave space for that cookie to melt down and spread. So these little glass cookies are going to have a puddle form as they melt because the glass wants that surface tension. Oh, it's a beautifully stormy day, by the way. Um, but uh, the surface tension of glass wants to be six millimeters thick. Now you can see these ones... <clears throat> you know are thicker than that from that first meltdown that we had done because yeah I guess I didn't give it enough time maybe to puddle out you know all of the way I, I don't know um but they will all cook down now that they're nice and small chunks into little puddle cabochons so I just wanted to give you a good idea of how much space I try to give them enough space that if both of them fall over they still may not be touching some of them if both of them fall over towards each other we may have some problems but it looks like it'll be fine also I tried to choose the flattest side to go down and we'll notice let's take note of these front two here how this one this is how the banding looks and it has a flat plane and then this is this one with a point. So we'll see if that makes any sort of difference in you know the final look of the piece. And then this one here is still has the edge attached. So I hope that this is helpful to y'all. Let's see how it fires down. Alrighty, you guys, it is the next morning after smashing and full fusing. Let's see how they look. It's, it's still quite warm in there, so we're not gonna be able to. So we can just take a peek. Oh my goodness. Okay, we'll close it. We want to take a closer look after they've cooled. But fortunately, none of them fused together. Yeah. Alrighty, guys, so we're doing another batch. Now, here we have a lot of our opaque ones, and these are probably going to come out kind of giant. So, like larger ones like this, we may want to cut in half, but we're going to try it out and see what happens. So, and if I can remember to, we, I keep on. I keep unloading the kiln without getting video. <laughs> so this is like the third batch of these that we've not gotten video. Um, hopefully this one we will get video whenever we open it up and that way you can see exactly side by side how things look. Okay, y'all, so we have cleaned these off and just check out how these melts turned out. So there you can see some of the shimmering blue venturing. And that's the back side. Sorry for the train, that's just how it goes. Here's another one, I think that's just gorgeous. You know, sometimes we'll get some little matte splotches, but, and y'all, I can't even, this, the camera is not doing these justice. Let's check out a different color. And these will be released uh, for sale in our upcoming shop update that at the time of recording um, will be... I don't know what day it is, <laughs> but be sure, to, be sure to sign up for our free newsletter at backtoearthcreations.com. Dot com, yeah. Um, oh, that's pretty too. And the traffic is just wild today. Let's pop back inside and get another view of these. Okay, so we are back inside. Let's take a peek at these. That is so pretty. I'm just I'm in absolute love with how these layered smash cabs came out but yeah if you guys sign up for our newsletter at backturthcreations.com uh, there's there's links down in the video description um we send out, a, send out a newsletter every time we have a new tutorial or a new uh, live stream or a new shop update and so 
we're going to be trying to make new batches of these every month um, in different color schemes and things. So if you're interested in those, I do recommend checking out our, uh, our newsletter. And then we also would be showing them in our uh, video tours that we do of the shop updates. So that's going to be pretty cool. Ooh, I like this one. This was one of the, like the edge ones that um, was a little bit of a mix between the two colors. I'm really, really digging it. And I also love the odd little shapes and stuff that we get with these. Like, very, very fun to wrap. Or set in chain mail or use in polymer clay or any of that good stuff. But yeah, and you can see there's different textures across the surface as well that's completely normal. Oh, all right. Well, this is what we've got. I'm going to go let the dogs in <laughs> because they are ornery. <laughs> and when we have these up for sale on our website, they will have um, pictures of them on a grid board as well as here on our hand so you can see kind of the size comparison um, as accurately as what we can. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or ideas, leave them down below. Um, if you would like first dibs on our shop updates and be the first to find out whenever we're having new sales and stuff, uh, you could join our channel membership or over on Patreon or our Happy Crafter Club um, for just a dollar a month. That'll get you a 20% off coupon as well as first dibs on all of our shop updates. So we will see y'all next time. And until then, you guys, happy crafting. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>